Right, so I wanted to do a video about um, the Akai samplers, but the bit I wanted to do the video about is the um, the computer integration that you can have with the Excels, um, and that also covers the S2000 because the S2000 is basically an S3000 Excel. Um, but I don't want to start from here. I want to go a little bit back. I want to go a little bit back with the um, S1000 and before that. So Akai started off as a small company and made a few products that didn't. It's not that they were not unsuccessful. It's just they um, they were not industry standard. They were, they were sort of popular in their own way, and they didn't really they didn't really quite get it until the S900, and that sort of became really sort of quite popular with the professionals because it was quite sort of you know it was affordable for the time and it was um, professional basically. I mean you had other sort of uh, keyboards and what have you, but uh, the 900 sort of got it right and it sort of really got the formula right for the time and uh, when they released the 950 something sort of overshadowed it at the time and that was the S1000 and that was around 88 now ever since the S1000 the Akai samplers haven't really changed that much until I'd say the next, what I call the next gen which is the 5000 and the 6000 in 98 so we got, um, I know you probably can't see, a 1100 here and a 3200XL here and a 3200XL was basically the last of the, what, the, the proper old Akai generation so as I said they didn't really change that much you had the 1000 and the 1100 and then when they brought the 3000 it's mainly what I'd sort of say, other than the, like, the resonant filters on them the operating system was just just a little bit more refined, you know, you, um, they got rid of the data where you had cursor buttons, but everything was still sort of in the same place. So that was 93 they released these uh, 3000 range. Uh, I don't want to talk about sound or anything, just like from an operating point of view. Um, in 95 they added a few things though, um, you had a multi mode, a multi timbral mode, which sort of simplified uh, the multi timbral arrangement, how you work with it. Um, it was yeah, easier for someone that didn't come from Akai samplers. Um, and the other sort of big thing was the computer integration, and that's what I don't want to talk to like you guys about with today the computer integration and SCSI. Um, so, yeah, that's what that added, and uh, I think their other big selling point was like, you know, cheap RAM the Excels compared to the old SIM modules, so uh, yeah, uh, have a look at that. Right, so let's start with SCSI, small serial computer interface, I think. Right, so before I do this though, I honestly recommend you read this, and I don't mean all of it, just a bit on SCSI somewhere near the back, because it explains it way better than I am. Um, but anyway, let's get started. So, what we have to uh, thing before anything else is um, each SCSI device, okay, so sampler, uh, your zip drive, your ROM drive, your computer, they all have to have a unique ID number, okay. Um, so for the moment, forget that side of things, let's just talk. Let's say we just only have one zip drive and uh, the sampler, okay, so those two devices have to be on a different SCSI ID. Now if we look at the Akai here it has uh, what's known as a local SCSI ID um, if you look in the global page and what it means by that that local SCSI ID that's the um, that's its SCSI ID number this device is and by default it's set to 6 okay now the zip drive if you buy one of these things on the back will have a switch to set your SCSI ID channel and termination. Now I'll mention termination in a minute. Um, so this is number six, okay, and the SCSI ID I've set on the back of here is number five, so that they won't conflict. Next up, and this is the big rule again, is each SCSI in your SCSI chain each end device has to be terminated so your Akai sampler is terminated by default 
from the factory. Uh, I think you can modify it to unterminate it, but that's how it is at the moment, okay? And this drive will have a switch on the back to be able to terminate it. You have this option on or off, okay? And um, if that is the last device in the chain, let's say you only have this drive connected, then the termination switch should be on. And that's all there is to it. In my chain, I have it connected like from left to right like this. You've got a sampler, zip drive, ROM drive, and the computer. So these two devices, the zip and the CD-ROM drive, are not terminated because this is the last device in my chain, the computer, which is terminated. Okay, the, the card in here, the SCSI card for the computer, is terminated. If I'd only have, let's say, the zip and a CD drive, then this CD drive would be terminated because that would be the last uh, device in my chain, let's say. Okay, so it's just that that's all there is to it. Um, there's nothing difficult there. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I need to cover. Um, SCSI cable lengths, again, this is in the manual. It says not to go over a certain length, I can't remember. The thing is, it all works for me. Uh, the reason I got two zip drives is because the S1100 has its own thing going on. So, um, as we said before, so this is on SCSI ID number 6, this is 5, this is 1, and the computer is 7. Nice and easy, yeah? Um, and to get all this working with the computer, you have to have operating system 2.0. Now whether you can see this or not, I'm not sure, but um, I'll just show you when you load it from the actual sampler, um, this bit, right, so if we go to the load screen, it's selected on floppy, if we just switch it over, it goes to hard drive, now it automatically, this uh, sampler is set to read from SCSI channel ID 5, that's my zip drive, if we want to change it, and press F5, we change that to 1, that's my ROM drive, press load again, there we go. And that's how we do that bit. Right, let's get the party started. This is a uh, IBM, like one of these like mini computer things, whatever the hell it is, that I found in a skip that's out in a bin uh, outside of school. I had no hard drive, uh, so I stuck a hard drive in it, and uh, still got license for it on uh, for Windows XP Pro, and it's a P4. Now things like this are very useful to have in a studio, especially if you have old gear, because this is able to run all sorts of cool shit that I wouldn't be able to do with a more modern computer. And all this is used for is literally uh, anything to do with samples or editing old synthesizers, I don't know, for example that FB01, or anything else. Uh, I have a Mac that I use um, for other stuff like Logic and other bits so yeah no this is this is useful to have um, and it's cheap and uh, I've got a um, USB audio interface an EMU one uh, and uh, it's got a PCI slot at the back which has the key ingredient here for this video a uh, SCSI uh, card an Adaptec one I can't remember what model number it is so if we boot it up <coughs> wait a little bit it should come on right there it is and you'll see my devices in a minute and your Kai sampler, zip drive and ROM drive and their respective MIDI channels so on to the next bit
Oh, okay, we were getting carried away. So this is Mesa, and uh, basically th these are your programs here in Sampler. These are your samples in the Sampler, and we can basically drag and drop. We can drag them either to the computer, to the desktop, like samples off here, or we can even drag samples off the desktop, like this thing, and we can drag it right in the Sampler, and that's that sample now in the memory. What's in red is basically what's selected, so yeah, that's Mesa, and you got access to, uh, where is it, um, everything basically on it. I can remember all the shit, so yeah, you can, if you're an S2000 user, you got graphical user interface for all your bits. Um, it's not really that useful for me personally. Right, now the next program I want to show you is uh, Recycle. This is pretty cool with the sampler. Um, so yeah, there it looks for the sampler, and then I can load in, this is just... that in. So I mean I already pre-chopped that for example. This is Let's turn the volume up a little bit. Alright so there you chops and all we have got to do is just transmit to free two hundred Excel and let's rename it as break. And I can set the sample rate here as forty four one or twenty two hundred and all I've got to do is transmit. There it is transmitting, and that's done. So that's in here now. Uh, if we just break, and if we play it on air, turn the modulation. So that's how quick that is. That's 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 what's really cool about that. If you uh, if you've got some stuff on the computer that you just want to fling into that without any messing about, it's really easy, really simple, and then you can further. I like to. Um, uh, just the key mapping, so it's uh, to all these pads in order. So yeah, that's that. And uh, right now, another cool uh, thing on here is Wavelab. Now this is a old version, and that still has a uh, SCSI capability, so I can receive or transmit stuff with the sampler. Um, uh, so here's a, a VL tone I recorded in the computer, and I looped it on here. <laughs> And uh, one of the reasons I did this was actually because um, I got a Blofeld and that's got the sample option. So, uh, yeah, you have to do all your looping in the computer on there. Um, one thing to note with this though is the Akai, although it's looped perfectly on here, for some reason doesn't always loop perfectly in the Akai, so you have to adjust the loop points a little bit. And the same applies if you load Emu or uh, Roland samples into it, which you can. Um, but look, here's a E3 CD, and that actually loads perfectly into that. So um, yeah, let's uh, transmit that. Just refresh it. It's basically there saying there's no samples in the memory, and we can transmit. And that's it. That's done. Uh, it hasn't created a new program. Um, I think you can if you want to, uh, but it's in it's in the memory. <laughs> And you can see that's clicking. Well, you can easily fix that by uh, just find. It's a pretty easy thing. And there it is. Oh, that's it. So that's where I'm going to talk from. I'm going to sit here, and this is my car rack, right? Bumbly bit of a How's that look?